All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know what time it is, man. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe for more daily 2K content, and let's get right into it. NBA 2K21, we got a little bit of news for you guys today. Obviously, we have some stuff from NBA 2K Lab telling you about a couple of badges. We got your boy Chico hitting legend, and last but not least, we got Joe Knows going to bat for the entirety of the gaming community, proving that he's the hero that we need, and we didn't even know that we wanted, or that we wanted, that we didn't even know we needed that we needed, that we didn't even deserve. There you go. Not all heroes wear capes. So if you don't do nothing else, keep it locked here, man. And uh, hit the video with a like if you like the video. Like I said, it helps the channel grow. It helps the notifications go out. Yesterday, we hit our like goal. Look at the numbers on that video. So this time, we're going to put up a like goal of 69 likes. And uh, hopefully, we can get there within the first hour. And other than that, I'll see y'all in a second. Hello! If you make it to C25, that's OG status. I was told you could be anything, just don't be average. Down bad, flat pipes, that shit made me a savage. Start hustling non-stop, don't plan on breaking that head. So right out the gate, man, like I mentioned prior, your boy Chico Filo has done it. He is a champion. Legend Chico is here. The grind doesn't stop here, though. Uh, wages on the way and locked in to, I mean, locked in to do it all over again for next gen. Dang, he said I'm big grinding this year. Uh, but for now, I can finally go outside and get some fresh air. Appreciate everyone that came that came through to uh, to the stream, which peaked at 10k. Love all of you. And obviously, you know, your boy Joe knows gives him the big W down there. You know, always showing love. Sin gives him love. All that bass plug. Everybody dignified. You know, you got a couple of people down there. Uh, you know, it is what it is, man. You know, Chico grinded. He hit that joint. You you can't you can't never hate on anybody's grind that decided to go from zero to legend just because of the fact that that is an accomplishment in and of itself. That takes a different type of grind. You you can't be playing around when you do something like that, man. Like you gotta you you really just have to be grinding, grinding, grinding. I've seen the twenty some hour streams. I've seen the you know the big streams and all of that stuff, man. He took he he did what everybody should do, man. You you take an opportunity like he he was playing with Tyson last year, took that opportunity and he's parlayed it into his own character, his own thing. And like I said, he's a likable guy, man. I, I said it last year. I didn't know he was gonna go to Legend or what have you, but I always said that he was a likable guy, um, very humble and all that good stuff, man. So it's good to see him make his own way in the 2K community. He took advantage of what somebody gave him, a little leg up that somebody gave him, found his own audience, and hey, he's gone He's gone his own way, man. You can't do nothing but applaud that young man for that. Uh, up next, man, we have, we got uh, NBA 2K Lab. And they, they're doing some video and they got some footage on Pogo Sticks and, and stuff like that, man. They're letting you know that Pogo Stick itself is, is, is actually a pretty good badge. And uh, you know they say what the boost is, but they do tell you, go over there and check the video out to see all the all the things with it and uh, should you equip it or not. I don't think that anybody can really play Big Man without, without equipping Pogo Stick or anybody really does because I definitely equip it. But you know, go over there, check that video out. Um, and while you're over there checking that video out, also go over there and check that video out on Green Machine. They're telling you the, the best way to, to use Green Machine, um, what to use it for, all that good stuff, man. What situations to use it in, what's the best uh, badge tier to use it in, all that good stuff, man. So, you know, go over there, check that out. Those guys do excellent work. I got to see me shoot this ball again, though. Doggone. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that, man. Look, I got on Green Machine Trade. This is, you know, this is old footage right here because I was still using the shot meter. Um, you know, that, that joint right there, man, it, um, it, it actually works. Green Machine is really good. And if you actually, if you're using the shot stick, Green Machine is even better. And let me tell you why. Because you have two chances that are green when you use the shot stick. And because you have two chances that are green, guess what? Green Machine works twice for you pretty much i mean that, that's how it goes it, it's just like you, you're getting you're getting a double bonus now you can get a double penalty too now if you don't do it right now if you don't know how to pull the stick down <laughs> you can get a, you a double penalty but green machine gives you a chance of the double bonus so if you, you if you part of shot stick game uh go ahead and do that and last but not least man joe knows going to bat for the community Bro, I was sitting here looking at this, so I, I, I looked at something, I see a tweet by Joe, cause you know I follow Joe, and I see Joe says, the amount of people that that buy slash play games is influenced 
heavily by content creators. And uh, you say creators are a huge part of why games become popular, which ultimately makes companies uh, much makes companies much bigger profits. And uh, you know, like um, and then Mike. I mean, uh, look at Mitchell. Mitchell even comes back and says it's a bad take on epic of epic proportions. This guy right here man like uh, sometimes you got to get a clown badge I, I don't care what you do or whatever if you're a clown i'm gonna I'm, 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 I'm tell you what you are and i'm gonna I'm explain my uh thing thing here later this guy right here comes and says what's his name alex hutchinson now i'm not gonna discredit the guy because he looks like he did some good stuff in his life creative director of montreal of, of yeah i guess that's ea montreal uh yeah it gotta be ea montreal and he, he's a uh, creative director uh, Journey to the Savage Planet, Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, Spore, Sims 2, and uh, you know, I guess some other stuff, bro. So this is what he said. Now we're gonna look at we're gonna look at his opinion right here, and he says that uh, streamers worried about getting getting their content pulled by the because they use because they use music they don't they didn't pay for should be more worried about the fact that they're streaming games they didn't pay for as well. It's all it's all gone uh it's all gone as soon as publishers decide to enforce it and that's true what he's saying I mean, nobody's saying that what he's saying is true the real truth is streamers should should be paying the developers and publishers of the games uh of the games that they stream they should they should be they should be buying a license oh i'm trying to look at the game too they should be buying a license like any real businesses and paying for the content that they use okay that's an interesting spicy take and that's why Joe knows said what he said. But I can see why he has this idea because none of these games are anything that anybody really watches on YouTube or stuff like that. And they don't have that type of push passion. They don't have microtransactions and stuff like that. So look, Journey to the Savage, I don't even know what Journey to the Savage Planet is. Maybe it does have that thing, so I can't lie. I know Far Cry doesn't, I know Assassin's Creed 3, nobody blew up off of that. Spore, maybe, I don't know, and Sims, we know Sims does. So with, with, with Sims being the case, look, what he's saying, it's been tried before. It, it has been. People, um, the, the, the companies, what, way back in, in 2012, uh, me, the Black Hokage, all these guys, we out here, we were out here fighting the good fight to try to get these, because the companies were saying, look, you can't, uh, you're, you're not gonna be able to post this content or they were getting ready to try to enforce this exactly like what he's talking about. They were like, if you don't have a license, because when you buy a game, you don't buy the game. You buy a license to play the game. You buy a license to use the game. That's what you're buying. You're not buying the actual game. So you just buy a license to use the game. That license does not include your right to post the game on YouTube and stuff like that. So when people were making money off of it, the the companies they got they you know they were like well dang can we make some of this money uh nintendo actually went so far as to say you cannot post any nintendo stuff on on um online you could not there's a time when you could not post anything nintendo on uh with the wii when the uh, wii 2 came out you could not post anything nintendo on youtube you would get stroked now you get flagged now uh dr trey 81 was pissed because of that so he realized what was happening that there's nobody putting the system out there. There's because because we're right now in a try before you buy type of environment where people are gonna want to try things before they buy things. They're not just gonna buy something like you don't just deserve my money because you said you made a good product. We want to see that you made a good product. So as a result, the we did not do as well as it did. And once they started letting people post the stuff online and, and stuff like that, the we started to trend in the upward direction. You had people like Sundi and all those guys that, that helped promote it. And then the we finished way stronger than it did. But in back, like I said, back in 2012, 2013, 14, we were going through this. And the only way that you could, there, there was actually something like that. You couldn't buy a license to post a game. But what happened is the MCNs had negotiated with all of the, uh, with the game, uh, providers and stuff they had negotiated with Activision they had negotiated with with uh, EA they had negotiated with take two and all of that stuff and what they had done is if you were part of it this that was this is when there was a reason to be a part of MCN so if you were part of MCN you had the right to uh to post the gameplay if you weren't a part of MCN you were out there to, left to your own devices and you were kind of hanging in the wind you might get struck you might not get struck 
Now, everybody can post it, but back then you had to be part of MCN to make sure that you were covered and that you could do it. So like I said, this has been tried before. We've seen it through. I would think that somebody that's in the industry saw how that went the first time. Anyway, what, what happened as a result was people were so scared to post stuff and they were only posting the games that that we knew that we could post like Call of Duty and stuff like that. Those games trended and they did they did proportionately better than the games that people could not post. Like some companies did try to enforce it and their games kind of flopped and they just did bad. Some people uh, just said, hey, go post our game. And then you got other people like like these, like these uh, the other companies, they just said, hey, um, the indie games and the indie company, they said, you know what, we're gonna use this as an opportunity to promote our games. The games that you get to post, like I said, I don't feel like anybody actually blows up because of the game. They're really gonna blow up because of their personality and stuff like that. But the game may be a conduit to find their audience like you got somebody like pretty boy fredo right he's successful outside the game cash nasty is successful outside the game most of these guys that get duke did successful outside the game they'd have done the amp thing agent success they may use the game as a conduit to get to where they're going but the game is not what made them popular as, as a matter of fact what happens really is especially in a game like 2k where 2k we already know that they make 60 percent of their revenue off of microtransactions. If Cash Nasty were not out there pushing my team, if uh, if um, what's my boy's name, o OSN wasn't out there pushing my team hard that year, if Pretty Boy Fredo wasn't pushing pushing uh Park hard that year and stuff like that, and everybody wasn't doing, how many people and telling you this bill, that bill? If you didn't have all these YouTubers telling you this stuff, get this card, get that card, do this bill, do that bill. Do we think? I know that 2K knows this because, like I said, Mike Mike uh, Mike Inkrock, he said it. I think that's how you say it, Mike Inkrock. I don't know why I want to say I can roll, but uh, Mike Inkrock, he actually said it. This is a bad take of epic proportions because he knows that 2K makes most of their money using microtransactions, and YouTubers are a big part that drive. You, you know, he said that drive the microtransactions. Same thing with Call of Duty. Call of Duty introduced microtransactions. They want everybody to put it out there. They want Korean Savage to put it out there. They want Marcus Day to put it out there. They want this stuff because they want you to put the newest stuff out there because a lot of times other people would not, wouldn't, wouldn't otherwise know. Y'all watch this news because y'all wouldn't otherwise know. Now, I don't promote any products for them, but uh, like I said, you look at me and you say, well, dang, what bill does Jay got? Why is he not missing? And then y'all, you go make the, I put the bill video out and then you go make the bill. You're like, well, damn, that works. And so it's the same thing with um, with with a lot of other games as well. Like I said, Call of Duty. You see, Marcus J drop somebody. Damn, I wonder if that's the gun. You go, you go, and you roll, and you roll, and you roll. And then when you finally get the gun, fifty dollars later, they got an extra fifty bucks out of you, and they made extra revenue. So maybe what he's saying is that's a very archaic thing. And yes, I understand the sentiment. But let me just ask you this: without you, uh, without Twitch, and we know that Epic realized this without, because they backed Ninja and they pushed Ninja and they pushed everybody, they pushed Ninja, they pushed Daquan, they pushed all of the people, uh, Tifu, all of those guys that were doing it. Does Fortnite get as big as it is without Twitch? I can tell you, absolutely not. Without Anthony Kong fan, without uh, Gr uh, Grimms, without Ninja, without those guys, a lot of people wouldn't even know that the game existed. They might have played it, but it doesn't get as successful as it is right now. So you got one, I, guess, I think it is the highest grossing game of all time right now, which is a free game that was influenced by content creators to the point where it became the highest grossing game of all time, if I'm not mistaken. And that happens to a lot of other ones. Content creators heavily push games and, and they make profits for the companies and so the company looks like Shh, it's the least that we can do to let them make some money off of it because the amount of money that we're making off of the, the amount of money that any content creator is making is literally dwarfed by the amount of money that that the um company makes off of that free advertising it's called what what do we call it it's called earn media earn media is when and i know this video is gonna be longer but earn me like when you got paid media uh, and you got your earned media. Earned media is when somebody advertises something for you. Somebody likes something so much that they make their own advertisement for it for free. They look at content creators as earned media. This is literally free advertisement for us. When they say, when the content creators came out and said, this is the best bill, and Mike knew that, that oh yeah, these bills ain't gonna be able to shoot. So they're gonna have to make that. That was earned media for them. 
So what we what do we do? We came out, everybody said, oh yeah, this is the best build right here. It's got a 75 shot. You can do this and that. People was like, okay, cool. I'm going to make that. And then when the game came out and all the content creators said, yep, you're not going to be able to shoot and you're going to have to use another build, what happened? Everybody made another build. And they made what their favorite content creator told them to, to, to make because those builds can shoot. They saw them sweat. Well, I can't shoot, but he can shoot. I wonder what his build is. Boom. And there you go. So the earned media is like a gift, the gift that keeps on giving. I promise you the amount of money that any content creator makes or all of them combined, all of the money that they make combined, like Ninja, Tifu, all of them, we know that the money that they make is in the millions, the millions. Fortnite are made in the billions. So the amount of money that they make, make off of the earned media, it's dwarfed by the amount of money that any con that all the content creators uh, make combined. Let me show you. Let me let me just do you do you something like this. Dick Gregory said it one time. And I'm gonna let y'all get up out of here. The um, uh, what the, the the most that any content creators making is probably in the millions. You take a million dollars, convert it to seconds. It's 13 days. You take a billion dollars, convert it to seconds. Add it up. It's 32 years. Who the hell want to be a millionaire? You see what I'm saying? Mill we talking millions to billions. Do these companies make those billions if they don't? If, if we don't have the earned media from these guys, I can't say that they can, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section. I'm sorry for the business lesson. I know my boy Bruce doesn't seem on the scene, Wicked, that mean. It's proud of your boy, man. I done swallowed a business book. I, wa I walk by the Dollar School of Business, the number one school of business in the country every single day. I had to soak up something from that joint, man, when I was at the University of South Carolina, man. Anyway, let me get up out of here, man. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what y'all think. Is my man bugging or is he right? Hey, you know, like if you're, I mean, because we know that they can strike you down just like they did Bullet. They can strike you down for any reason or no reason at all. They always maintain that right. They just don't exercise that right because it does not benefit them too because it's free advertising for them. The music, the music world doesn't see it like that yet, but uh, they'll get there. We'll see. Anyway, I got to go, man. I'm going to holler at y'all next time. Till next time. It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK of the People's Champ. Guys,